Hello, my name is Jonathan Looney. I'm a network architect in Juniper Network's Education Services Department. Today I'm going to demonstrate basic MPLS configuration on Juniper devices. MPLS is a method of forwarding which involves applying a label to packets. Here you see a normal IP packet. A router can add a label to the packet. Other routers can then use this label to forward the traffic rather than examining the IP header information. Now you might be wondering why someone would want to do this. Well, I'll give you at least two scenarios where this is helpful. Processing labels instead of IP header information means that you can have core routers that don't have routes for every IP address. Rather, they can use the label information to forward packets through your network. Also, you can use labels to create paths through the network called label switched paths or LSPs. These paths may differ from the path the normal IP packet would take. You can use these paths for traffic engineering purposes or to implement quality of service policies. In order to enable a router to process MPLS packets, there are two things you need to configure. First, you need to configure the router to transmit and receive labeled packets on one or more interfaces. Second, you need to somehow handle label distribution. This router needs to know what labels it should use when sending traffic to other routers, and other routers need to know which labels they should use when sending traffic to this router. So you need to somehow provide label information to each router, extract label information from the router, or both. Normally this is done by configuring a label distribution protocol. The common label distribution protocols are LDP and RSVP. However, other protocols, such as BGP, may also carry label information. To configure Juniper devices to process labeled packets on an interface, you need to configure family MPLS under the appropriate unit and also add the appropriate interface and unit to the protocol's MPLS configuration. You need to add both pieces of the configuration for each interface that will process labeled packets. This is a good place to use a commit script to ensure that you have added both pieces of configuration. We also need to ensure the router has label information. Here we will show you how to configure the router to exchange label information with other routers using LDP. To configure a Juniper device to exchange labels using LDP, you configure the interface in the protocol's LDP hierarchy. Note that by default, LDP and RSVP routes are placed in the INET.3 table. This means that the routes are only used for resolving the next hop of BGP routes. This causes your BGP routes to follow label switched paths without impacting non-BGP routes. Let me demonstrate this for you using the topology you see on the screen. Here you see a network with seven routers and two customers. I have pre-configured all the routers except R1. I will show you how to configure R1 to process MPLS traffic and exchange label information with other devices using LDP. We will then see that traffic to one of the customer networks is encapsulated in MPLS for forwarding across the network. Here I am connected to R1. I will configure family MPLS on the three interfaces connected to the rest of the internal network. Because we do not expect the customer to send labeled packets to R1, I do not need to configure family MPLS on the interface connected to the customer. Next, under Protocols MPLS, I will add the three interfaces connected to the rest of the internal network. Again, I do not need to add the interface connected to the customer because we do not expect the customer to send labeled packets to R1. Finally, I will configure all three interfaces under Protocols LDP. This will enable R1 to exchange label information with its neighbors over these three interfaces. Here are the configuration changes we made. I will now commit this configuration.
Now I will look for the LDP neighbor relationships. As you can see, we have neighbor relationships established in all three interfaces we configured. We can also examine the LDP information we are exchanging with our neighbors. Here you see the label mappings R1 is received from and sent to R4. Next, I will look for LDP routes. You'll notice that these routes are in the INET.3 routing table. The INET.3 routing table is not used for normal packet forwarding. However, when the router is trying to determine the next top of a BGP route, it will consult the INET.3 table. If it finds a matching route there, it will use that route to forward the traffic to the next top. Therefore, while the router will not use the routes in INET.3 for normal forwarding, the router will use these LDP routes when determining the next hop for BGP routes. Here you can see that the router has used the LDP route in determining how to forward traffic to 192.168.1.0/24, a network advertised by one of the customers. You see label information in the next hop. And if we look at the extensive route output, you will see that it used the route from INET.3 to resolve the next hop to 10.210.0.7, the route's BGP next hop. If I use trace route to trace the path to 10.210.0.7, you will see that the trace route follows the normal path. However, if I use trace route to trace the path to 192.168.1.1, you will see the trace route shows MPLS label information. Now, in both cases, the second hop is R7. However, we only see MPLS labels listed in the second trace route. That is our indication that the router used MPLS to forward the traffic in the second trace route, whereas it didn't use MPLS to forward the traffic in the first trace route. There are many things you can configure to customize the behavior of MPLS forwarding. For example, you can change the way TTLs are decremented, which may hide the MPLS portion of a path from a trace route. Or you can configure RSVP and customize the paths for your LSPs. Or you can configure the router to place the LDP or RSVP routes in INET.0 so they will be used for normal forwarding to the destinations of the routes. MPLS is a powerful tool for network engineers, and there are many things you can do to customize the behavior of MPLS forwarding on your Juniper devices. Here we have just covered the basics. More information about MPLS configuration is available in the MPLS Applications section of the Junos product documentation, available on Juniper's website. Also, Juniper Education Services offers a course called Junos MPLS and VPNs. You can find more information about that course by visiting the website shown on the screen. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demonstration of basic MPLS configuration. Juniper Learning Bytes. View more at www.juniper.net slash learningbytes. They're free, concise lessons on specific subjects, relevant for all skill levels, taught by training experts, and available whenever and wherever you're ready to learn. Juniper Learning Bytes. Expand your knowledge bit by bit.